All right, guys. Well, it has been a few weeks, and we are finally back in the garage. So I wanted to uh, catch you guys up on what's going on. A lot of that time I was spent waiting for parts for Bob, which have finally arrived. So we got a new custom cam for uh, for Bob, you know, that is made to work with the turbo that he has, the converter that he has, and so on and so forth. Um, shaft rockers and bow springs all that stuff to work together. Now, while we were waiting for parts, I took on a little bit of a project to help a friend of mine out, which you see right here behind me, is an S10 uh, with a built 5.3 um, power glide and a 80 millimeter billet something or other from BS Racing, this guy right here. So, we got the, uh, the turbo kit had to be redone. It had one on it, but it was done uh, by a guy that normally doesn't do this kind of stuff. And the engine wasn't sitting in the truck correctly. So the turbo kit was kind of null and void and it had to be redone. So anyways, uh, we redid that and I'll show you that real quick. So we got to use these upswept headers, or at least on this side we did. This side we had to change it up a little bit because there wasn't any room for it. So we reused uh, all their tubing as much as we could, or the flanges, I should say. Uh, cold side is pretty much done. We need a piece of tubing here to connect to the throttle body and so on and so forth. So that turbo kit needs some finish work done to it in way of welding and, and some cleanup and whatnot. A couple of bungs welded in it and then we are good to go. Now on for the uh, next part, um, I already did one of them. So I had a three different intakes that I had to do fuel injection conversion on or fuel injection modification, if you will. So this First intake that I'm going to show you is actually not the full intake. It's a billet intake for a billet head big block Ford. And that thing is getting 16 800 pound per hour injectors in it. So it is a monster. So I got those, the just the runner part of it sitting on the table. And there it is. So we're going to get these, uh, these blocks are going to get put in right here something like that um, to replace these bungs because I don't know if you can tell from the camera or not but these things are candid those injector bosses on the billet runners are canted um, pointing towards the rear of the car and the front of the car we're going to put them in straight up and down and then threaded bungs for the threaded injectors and it's going to get um, 16 soft lines to each injector. So they just screw in on the top and they go to a distribution block more or less and makes things a little neater. Easier to maintain and no O-rings to blow out, which is a big problem when you run big boost and high fuel pressure and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of scary, actually. So this one that I'm about to show you, that billet intake, that mainly billet intake. There is a weldment involved, but anyways, that thing was originally set up for four mechanical injector nozzles per cylinder on a, well, I can't say what kind of engine. Anyways, it's on a big engine that goes in boosted GT's car, the orange car. So we're going to get that set up with the, pretty much the same setup that's in the other runners we just talked about. It's going to get 16 uh, I think they're a little different, seven or 800 pound per hour injectors. I don't remember which. Um, so anyways, same kind of blocks, same kind of setup, just in that intake. So that's going to be for Boosted's car, for the orange car. And um, we will probably not see any of that in the video, but Todd's on his way over to pick up this S10 and take it home to do some finish work on it. And then you'll probably see it back here in a few weeks or something like that. Um, but now we're gonna get started putting the engine together for Bob. All right, step in the right direction. Todd's truck is gone. Bob is back on the operating table. So we're going to clean this mess up and get started 
at the very least uh, get ready to get started putting the engine together because we need a clean operating room. So time to handle that and we'll move on. All right, so far so good, everything checked out. I bought a precision straight edge to check the cylinder heads with and it looks like it's just a piece of metal, but it's actually, I don't know if you can see it or not, right around my finger somewhere, there's a stare at logo. So that thing is, uh, ground straight and flat guaranteed to be straight within like four tenths of a thousandths over the whole length of this thing which is two feet so I just place it on the cylinder heads like this and check a feeler gauge under there in everywhere that it touches and then you do it in an X pattern and then do it straight across and if a thousandth and a half feeler gauge doesn't go, then it's considered to be pretty stinking good. So we're gonna carry on with the next part and get this uh, this thing checked out. So since I put the short block together uh, several weeks ago, I'm gonna kind of check everything out and make sure I didn't uh, foobar anything that way, but uh, we'll keep moving. All right, so this video of putting the engine together spans probably over the course of a week or two or something like that, I don't know exactly, but anyways, what I didn't record, or better yet, what I probably tried to record is that uh, getting the heads back on the motor. So first thing it did was pull the threads out of the block. The second thing it did, I, I went to the other side of the block and I, you know, I thought, well, I'm going to put the other head on and make sure it doesn't pull any more threads. And I went to put that head on and broke a head stud. Now, according to ARP, that is... 150% user error. I don't necessarily agree with that and you would think that a $750 set of head studs would stand up to a torque wrench and not even reaching their torque, but whatever. So those two things combined caused me to, rather than replace the $750 set of head studs because some of the others were suspect after I'd pulled them back out and checked them, um, I went on the search for the Tick Performance um, drill fixture to drill and tap the block for half inch head studs. And thanks to a couple of good friends that got me going the right way, um, a friend had the Tick Performance fixture so I didn't have to buy it, I got to borrow it. And another guy um, close by got me pointed in the right directions on, on the fact that you can use viper head studs to convert this to half inch head studs um because everybody that has the ls specific head studs are out of them and they're out for five or six more weeks so if anybody's wondering see if you can see that there you go you can see that that's the viper head studs now yes they are a little more money no they are not exactly like the tick performance version but they do work um they're a little bit longer but you have more thread engagement in the block and when i threaded this block i used that to my advantage where there's actually more usable threads in the block so enough of the talking here it is dun, dun, dun. heads are sat down on it uh i put them on there just to check it right now i gotta pull them back off and put the um athena rings in the head gaskets these dudes right here so that is ready to go hopefully we'll be dropping it in the car uh like real soon by the end of the video we'll see okay so we did a big skipperoo on the engine there and didn't get a whole lot a whole lot of the assembly documented you know on the video but um, for anybody that's wondering, the Tick Performance uh, drill fixture to convert to half inch head studs and the part number that I showed for the Viper head studs are a great fix to, for the DIY to do half inch head studs on an LS engine. So that was probably the best thing that I did for this. Um, we put one under main bearings in it to close up some of the main bearing clearance to regain some of the oil pressure and that actually worked out great. And then of course the Athena head gaskets that I mentioned earlier, 
um, seems to have solved our problem. So um, I'll elaborate on that a little further in the upcoming videos, which you're going to see uh, in the next couple of days because they're already made. Um, but as you can see behind me, uh, the engine is in Bob and it is ready to rock and roll. So uh, thanks everybody for stopping by and checking out this brief uh, talkathon on this particular video. But um, we're starting to get into some action now. So thanks for stopping by. As usual, I appreciate it. And be sure to tune in for the next couple of videos because we got some good stuff coming up. Thanks, guys.